evening to all our friends at St Paul's. It's a real privilege to share our hearts with you tonight. This is Ian and Mary Grant. The topic we've been given tonight is to talk to you about hope. We hope you've had a lovely day, but the hope we're talking about tonight is not that sort of hope. It's the hope that's connected inexorably to the promises of God for our future. So, you know, we might talk about optimism or hoping that things will get better. But the wonderful thing about hope is that it lets us let go of that sense of having to predict the future and whatever, and um, to live fully in the present, knowing that Jesus will never leave us alone. And so we can live in the present knowing that we've settled. Every one of us as Christians at some stage in our life do have to settle. Who have we trusted our life with? Who have we trusted? Where is our treasure? Who are we trusting? Where is our hope? And having settled that question, as Paul said to Timothy, um, I know who I have believed and am convinced he's able to keep that which I've committed to him against that day. So that's our hope, that our life and our future is in God's hands, so we can faithfully serve him. I love the quote by C.S. Lewis, um, it's one of his famous ones, but down through the ages, those who've done the most for this world are those whose hearts are in heaven. And we want to have our faith and our hope in heaven and having settled that, to know that we can live in the present, serving and following God and loving our neighbours. This is what the scriptures say about it. Hebrews uh, chapter 6, uh, verse 16, from reading from the Living Bible. When a man takes an oath, he is calling upon someone greater than himself to force himself to do what he's promised, or to punish him if he later refuses to do it. The oath ends all argument about it. God also bound himself with an oath so that those he promised to help would be perfectly sure and never need to wonder whether he might change his plans. He has given us both his promise and his oath, two things we can completely count on, for it is impossible for God to tell a lie. Now all those who flee to him to save them can take new courage when they hear such assurances from God. Now they can know without doubt that he will give them the salvation he has promised them. This certain hope of being saved is a strong and secure anchor for our souls, connecting us with God himself behind the sacred curtains of heaven, where Christ has gone ahead to plead for us from his position as our high priest with the honour and rank of Melchizedek. As a small child, I had some spiritual certainties that I just knew that were obvious to me. And one of those spiritual certainties was that heaven was across the Waiwatu stream. We lived in Lower Hutt in those days. And I knew it was true because my older sister, who was five, she knew stuff. And she told me that that's where heaven was. But I also knew it was true because my parents, had read the Pilgrim of Progress to us at the dinner table. There were six children in the family. I was one of the youngest. And we looked forward to this episode of Pilgrim's Progress every night at the dinner table. And the copy they had had little stick figures of, and we used to love these stick figures. They got held up and handed around to the children. But I can still vividly remember these stick figures. But one of them particularly was as Pilgrim got to to, well, he was Christian then, but he got to the river and he could see, they could see the celestial city on the other side. And the companion he was then walking with was hopeful. His faithful companion, Faithful, had been killed. He had spent some time walking on his own and then God had sent Hopeful to walk beside him. And I used to wonder, why did God give him Hopeful to get across the, the river to the celestial city? And then I, when I learned the real truth of biblical hope, it's not a wishful hope, it's anchored so firmly in the things we know that God has said and the things that we know that God will do. So um, as Hopeful helped Pilgrim across that river towards the celestial city, 
he said, keep looking at the king, he said, keep looking at the king, and then the river will become shallower. Um, so when Pilgrim thought he was he's sinking, Hopeful would say, keep looking at the king, keep looking at the king, and, and then he could get his feet on the bottom. So, you know, we need to understand that that's where our hope is. I remember when God called me into full-time service and into a ministry, Youth for Christ, which had no funds at the time and no assurances of salary or anything, but I knew God had given me a call. And then he gave me this wonderful scripture that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He considered the stigma that rested with God's anointed better than all the riches of Egypt. And uh, I look back now and God has been so faithful. He's blessed us abundantly. And uh, we need to be always aware, are our decisions earthly or eternal? And it's the littlest decisions as well. We'd just like to finish with this little devotion from Henry Nguyen. He's talking about the Eucharist people, which is us, people of hope. People who come together, who come around the table and who do what he did in memory of him. People who keep telling each other the stories of hope and together go out to care for the fellow human beings. Not pretending to solve all problems, but to bring a smile to a dying man and a little hope to a lonely child. It is so little, so unspectacular, yes, so hidden, this Eucharistic life, but it's like yeast, like a mustard seed, like a smile on a baby's face. It's what keeps faith, hope, and love alive in a world that is constantly on the brink of self-destruction. As they pass through the Valley of Becca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. And that's who we are, the people of hope. As we pass by, hopefully we bring with us um, pools of refreshing water. Let's highlight hope and let's be carriers of it. And I think it's a good thing uh, to just find a few scriptures uh, in the Bible about uh, our assurance of hope and learn them off by heart. And that is a wonderful thing because then you hide them not only in your mind but in your heart. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you that you created us. You created us with a purpose. And I pray that every one of us may find that purpose. And I pray that everyone who's listening to this may reach out in hope and grab hold of that wonderful promise that they are called by a living God, that Jesus died so that they would have eternal life and would be brought into the family of heaven. Thank you, Lord. Amen. When I think 
that God his son not sparing sent him to die I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin for God am I Vakaria mai Tauri peka kio Tia ho mai Raro to i te po Hei kona au Titi roa When Christ shall come With shouts of acclamation And take me home what joy shall fill my heart Then shall I bow In humble adoration And there proclaim My God how great thou art Then sings my soul Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, yeah. then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, yeah. how great thou art. Oh uh...